to Truth and Grace with John and Mark. In this podcast, we tackle difficult issues related to living, loving, and leading in a broken world. Today's episode is about living authentically. Welcome back to Truth and Grace with John and Mark. Always great to be with you, John. Good to be with you, Mark. And today we are talking about authenticity. So I thought it would be great to start the program out with you telling us, maybe you have a story about authenticity that you might want to share with us. Oh, great. You, so you asked me to share that yeah, story. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Notice you're not volunteering <laughs> that on that That was my one. intro. Uh, <laughs> I asked the questions. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I, so this one relates to me and my wife. Mm, okay. So uh, Amy and I were in a ministry gathering where, you know, we were probably – we may not have been the youngest people in the gathering, but we were close to the youngest. Yeah. So that says there might have been one couple younger than us. So that says something about you. Know, <laughs> this was an older group, and you well, know, you are pretty old. So yeah, yeah, well, you know, but I will always be younger than you. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're sitting in this gathering of ministry people and it's a Christmas party mm. going around the table and somebody does is trying to do one of these icebreaker kind of things. Right. And, you know, as a point of authenticity and transparency, Amy and I both hate those. <laughs> 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 and so uh, they get to Amy before, you know, as they're going around the table get before they get to me as so they get to Amy and you know, Amy. So, you know, she's yeah. this, she looks very conservative from the, an outside view, you know, yeah, kind, gentle, a lot of those things. Um, and they get to Amy and they're like, so, Amy, what's what would you like to share? And like I said, very conservative group. She just looks at them without smiling, without anything. And she says, I have a really big tattoo and I carry a gun. <laughs> 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 and then you could tell they were all like. Is she being serious? <laughs> you yeah. don't really know. <laughs> well, if you're watching and you don't know Mark and Amy too well, so I've known Mark and Amy for 30, Five years 35 years or so, yeah. a long time. And the first time that I met Amy, her love for Palestinian people and taking the gospel around the world. Yeah. And to, so to to say that from from somebody that has this you know just purely loves Jesus it had to be hilarious. So. <laughs> and her nickname was Betty Crocker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, like Miss Domesticity here. And then she's got I got a big tattoo and I carry a gun. That's right. She was in Bible college and she she could uh, cook, so she was always in high demand. Yeah, so. and and then they get to me and they're like, so Mark, what's yours? And I was like, well. I like women who have big tattoos and carry go. guns. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I better clarify that I like this woman. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, not all women. Not right? all women. Yeah. Not an invitation. So, you know. Well, good. Yeah. So, but yeah, we are going to talk today about living authentically. Yeah. Very good. I mean, um, I think this has always been important. Mm. I think scripture encourages authenticity. Yes. For one, we, we understand that God knows everything. Yep. So we're not hiding anything from him. Of course. You know, and that lack of authenticity really seemed to come with the fall. Yep. You know, we we started lying to ourselves and lying to God. Yep. You know, so that's where the lack of authenticity started. But it's so it's always been an issue. It should be. Mm-hmm. But I think as we're doing ministry today, especially if we're trying to reach younger people. Yep. Authenticity is has become an increasingly valued value. Yeah. And so I and, and it and it should and it should be. You know, one thing to just, you know, talk about in in the area of authenticity. Yes, God does know uh what our shortcomings and our failures are, but I will add this to it. Authenticity probably has less of, of saying, what does God, you know, the question is, Adam, where are you? Mm-hmm. And so God knew exactly where Adam was. Sure. It was the confession, though, and this mm. is what I think authenticity starts to get rooted in, is is having the self-awareness to go, I see who I am and where I am, and now I'm honest with that. And, and that's just being comfortable in your own skin. That's knowing who you are and what you're about. That I think is the is the foundation with authenticity. Absolutely, and you know that that word confess in those that context really just means to agree with. Yep. And so all we're saying is, 
we agree with God's knowledge already of us. <laughs> but interestingly, you know, James says, confess your faults yep. one to another so that you might be healed. You know, and so I think there's that element where we're supposed to also live not only authentically with God, but we're supposed to live authentically with one another. Yeah, that's probably the root of talking about authenticity is are you are you consistent um, with being honest with who you are or do you have one image with your when you're with certain people or if you're in ministry when I'm on I'm on a stage, I'm one person. But then when you meet me in the hallway, I'm somebody else. It's keeping that consistent personality of who you are and letting it be reflected in an honest way. So you don't have the, well, I'm at home now, so I'm the guy at home. Uh, I'm at church now, so I'm the guy at church. I'm at work now, so I'm the guy at work. And so you're constantly changing given the environments that are around you rather than being you know, just just being who you are at all times with all people. What do you think about that? I, I couldn't agree more. I, yep. I don't even think I have anything to add. I think yep. it, it, you nailed it there. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think about people like I have a friend who is brilliant, mm-hmm. has a Ph.D. Um, in nuclear engineering. Uh, Sorry, no, aerospace engineering. That's probably even more intense, you know. (laughs) He's told me the name of his doctoral thesis before, and I I think I got like three words out of the whole thing, and Mm. and they were probably the prepositions or something. (laughs) You know, I I didn't understand anything about it. And uh, the the thing I admire so much about this friend is he's actually nicer in private than he is in public. Yep. How many people do we know it's just the exact opposite? Yeah. They have a public persona. But then in private, they're a very different kind of person, and it's not a nicer person. It's not right. a better version of that public person. It's a yeah. worse version of Absolutely. that public person. And um, I don't know. This is – so I think there's two issues here, especially mm-hmm. if we're thinking about people in ministry. Yeah. One is style. Yep. And one is substance. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this. You and I went to college together, went to a Christian college, and yep. every spring and every fall they would have um, a spiritual emphasis week. Mm. You know, and I know you remember those. And yep. they would have, you know, some usually some well known person come in yep. and speak. Well, they had a guy come in. And I know his name, but I won't mention it in this particular context. Good. Yeah, good, yeah. he's with Jesus now. <laughs> oh, good. And so I know he loved the Lord, no mm-hmm. question. Had a fruitful ministry. So this is actually an example of style, not right. substance, not character. Okay. So he, first day, entered. he gets up behind the platform, up behind the pulpit in chapel, right. and he... Inner kind of says some nice things, you know, thank you, Dr. Hennessy, for inviting me to be here this week, you know, and he says a few nice things to the student body and all that. And then when he gets ready to preach, he goes, now, if you'll open your Bibles, it's like he had this total personality change. Like, what happened between that guy and that guy? Like, two different people, Jekyll and Hyde showed up here, at the, you know, and even though. You know, I, in no way am I speaking against this man's character. He was yeah. an authentic man of God. I mean, but even then, in my 20s, that did not sit well with me. Yeah. Because, I and I know he just, in his own culture, right? you know, you had a preaching voice. Yep. Yeah. But in today's world, you know, that, that, that didn't sit well with me then. In today's world, that's unacceptable. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, you've been around, you know, about as long as I have when it comes to ministry. And I I came, you know, a little bit like you. I came out of jail, came, you know, from some difficult circumstances. So, you know, you start getting into, you know, church circles Mm -hmm. and Christianese. Yeah. And you you can nearly at this point, I could, you know, hear somebody preach and not even know what denomination they are. And you go, well, he's got the Baptist voice. (laughs) He's got the liturgical voice. He's got the Pentecostal voice. And it, and it and it's like you're saying it uh, it's not that it makes any of those bad people but what what they what what we have to be careful is that we're not trying to fit into somebody else's voice or find somebody else's message we need to own it because Jesus wants to do a work 
in me and you and we're different. But when it comes across as authentic, I think that it's, it's far more powerful, particularly in the culture that we live in. Agreed? A hundred percent. And I think that in today's world, people are honestly, I think people are getting fed up with performers yep. in the pulpit. Yes. They want authentic people of God who are a conduit yep. between what God is saying to them and what he wants to say to the people. And he doesn't, they don't want, that doesn't mean they have to be boring. Yes, of course. Not. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we want people, to, we want to be good communicators because we don't want the important message that we have to share to get lost yeah. in bad communication. But I think no matter what your personality is, God can make you a good communicator using your personality and your temperament. Yep, that's truth. So now that's that's just that's like kind of like a ministry authenticity. Sure. But we we want to talk at a deeper level today about living mm-hmm. authentically. So when you hear those terms, living authentically, what comes to your mind? Yeah, this is a this is a this is a good subject for me. When you know we uh, you're you you were at the church that I planted there in Jacksonville, yep. and you know great church. God did some great things there. When we were seven people in a trailer, um, God gave me what became a slogan in the church that we kind of plaster it everywhere. But it says authentic people trusting Christ, and we purposely put those those two together. I think it's a God. You know, it, it really helped to identify the church. People would come to the church and they would be like, hey, not only is that a slogan on the wall, but it's the way that people live uh, here. And so it was it was mixing together that uh, realness of life and being comfortable in our own skin while at the same time having a deep faith in Jesus. And sometimes you get people who have one or the other. They have a deep faith, but they're not necessarily authentic in the mm. way that they talk and behave. Or you find somebody who's authentic that doesn't have a deep faith, and they're very real. But you're <laughs> like, real you put that back in the bag there. <laughs> you know, like, I uh, don't really think I want to, you know, see all that, you know. Sure. So authenticity to in, to some people in places, what it does is it reflects that, hey, I, uh, I sin. I'm okay with my sin. I don't care who cares that I sin because sure. I'm authentic. But that's not real spiritual authenticity. Right. You know, yeah, I, I like to say we want godly authenticity is being honest about your best self. Yeah, you know the self that God's calling you upward to that mm-hmm. acknowledges I'm not perfect. Yeah, that's not like a, you know, you're not trying to present yourself as something that you aren't, <laughs> but you are trying to present yourself as that I am on a progression. Yep, I am trying to be more than I am. Paul says, all those things, they're behind me. Yep. I'm moving forward, you know, growing in grace every single day, that sort of idea. Yep. Philippians chapter one, I can't quote it correctly. <laughs> you know, I, I could paraphrase it really well, but I couldn't quote it. So I'm going to read it to you. Oh yeah, that's good. All right. So this is now, of course, this is a, this is a ministry context, mm-hmm. but Paul's talking to the church in Philippi and he says, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ right. so that whether I see you, whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in the spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. It's that there seems to be an authenticity there. Yes. You know that one, Paul's being authentic with them and he's yeah. also asking them to be authentic with one another. <laughs> and yet Holiness is not absent yeah. from that context. Yeah. You know, my my first 20 some years in ministry, probably 21 years, thir- 13 years in youth ministry, and then eight years in Ireland. And I will tell you this, you can't you can't be a youth pastor for 13 years and not be authentic because kids will just kill I mean, teenagers will just kill you. <laughs> you know they, I mean? they, they have can, no mercy. Yeah, and they can smell it, man. <laughs> and they go a mile away. <laughs> and if it's not real, they know it and they see it. So yeah. to thrive in youth ministry, is, authenticity yeah. is – because they then they see you behind the scenes sure. and you're playing basketball and football and then you're preaching to them on a Wednesday night. Sure. And then you go to, I mean, the south of Ireland. I mean, in the Republic of Ireland – Again, if 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 you come off with an air mm. and you don't have an authentic life, Irish people will 
just check you right off of their list because they are, you know, good, authentic people. So um, so I think when it comes to and, and that's whether you're a pastor or whether you just live in the church, I think that that life of authenticity and, and I love this about the Apostle Paul is that he was just he loved God. Mm-hmm. And if you love God and it's sincere and you just live that way and treat people that way and talk to people that way and engage whether they're Christians or non-Christians, it really has a powerful effect. I found over the years that people really are genuinely just connected to that authenticity because they have seen all the preachers with all the arguments and all the messages, and they're looking for something that's real. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, living authentically could be taken as an excuse to just speak your mind, yep. regardless of the consequences. I know that's not what you're saying. Of course not. Yeah. So, you know, Scripture tells us we're supposed to speak the truth yep. with love. Yep. You know, so h- how do we live authentically? How do we speak truth and yet do so in a way that is for the lifting up of people and not the tearing down of them? No, this is this is such a good thing that you're bringing up here, Mark. You know, early on in ministry, when I started off, um, a lot of the pastors that I worked around, they had this ideology of like, you know, hold things close to your chest. Mm. Don't be watch what you say around people because sure. people will judge you, and and everything was, and, and to like, the point of not even having friends. Oh, be encouraged not to have friends in their ministry context. No, and and it, uh, Lord, it'd be hard to have relationships with your own family mm. when you have this dichotomy of sure. personalities. Wow. But it's and I and I remember early on as I was just you know coming into ministry, the Lord spoke to me and said, "Listen, it will it will cause you pain. Mm. People will be able to see what the issues are, but when you live authentically, when you are just you." And then there's a genuine love for God. I think it's one of the greatest keys in discipleship because when you put those walls up, those walls don't only protect you, but what it does is it it doesn't allow people to see how you deal with the issues of life. Mm -hmm. And they need that. Like in ministry, people in churches need to see pastors, leaders, whether it's Sunday school teachers or whoever, they need to see people and go, hey, here's your weaknesses. Here's your battles. You're not on this, you know, uh, utopian place that you're above life and situations. But how do you navigate through the issues of life? And when they can see that in an authentic way, it literally teaches them how to walk through the issues that they go through. Mm. So this is something that I think is so fundamental to good ministry mm. is being authentic with how you live, how you behave, and how you walk through things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have experiences with that, Mark? Like, I mean, obviously you've been in, in uh, places cross culturally where you're dealing with different people and, and, and you, I'm sure you have to take into account the cultures that you're dealing with. How does that affect authenticity? Yeah. So in America, we are a, we are a justice culture. So our culture is about right and wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually the minority in the world. Most parts of the world are actually an honor shame culture. And it's actually much harder to be authentic in an honor shame culture. Yeah. You know, because if you are authentic, if you acknowledge your failures, your flaws, people are very uncomfortable with that because nobody really acknowledges that sort of thing. And so I can remember being with a friend one time and even to the point of sharing the gospel with them and you know, saying to them, you know, look, I'm a sinner. I'm flawed. I make mistakes regularly. You know, I, I all, I'm i blowing it. And, you know, the, it's like the more I said this, you could see them becoming more and more and more like pensive. And then I said something and I remember him going, please don't say that. And, <laughs> and you know, I was like, you know, why? You know, I was kind of trying to mind down in an appropriate way of asking why. And he basically said, because you're a good person. You're a lot better than I am. So if you're that bad, (laughs) I'm toast. (laughs) I have no hope. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. But but that actually led to a great conversation because the point is we neither of us have hope. Yeah. 
you know, and one of the things that I think for me is a great pattern uh, for this is Jesus was the pattern for authenticity. Right. Now, he was perfect in the sense that, you know, he lived sinless, Mm -hmm. but he showed when he was weak. You know, when he was frustrated, when he was angry, people knew it. Absolutely. You know, but but he was always interested in the other person's good above his own. Yep. So it's a great example of how we can live authentically yep. and yet live for the betterment of others. Yeah, it's, it's a great part of the story, you know, where Jesus, you know, he, he he has that holy indignation and he's turning over tables in the in the temple. And, you know, the Bible says he, he clears the temple. Yeah. But it, in, it, it says in the gospel, I believe in Matthew, it says, then after the temple was cleared, then they brought in the hurting and the broken and the disillusioned and they were healed. So when you look at it, you go, oh, this, you know, angry man is just, you know, clearing the temple. But the purpose of that was because he wanted people to be able to come in once all of the, the motivations were right and the authenticity was there, that people could come and, and be healed. Is there is there anything that you would give to advice maybe the people that are listening in today to go, hey, like maybe this is something that a person struggles with. Maybe they like to keep the shield up. Mm-hmm. Um, is there there's is there maybe some words that you could say to them like, here's some good reasons to bring the shield down mm. and to behave more authentically? Yeah. I, well, the first one comes to mind is living inauthentically. Yep. is really lonely. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're trying to keep that to yourself all the time, you're you're going to feel like and honestly feel like nobody knows me. Yeah. And you know, just to, I know you're going to finish up on this, but you can be in a the most lonely place in the world is in a crowded room. Oh my goodness. And then you feel alone. So, yeah. it doesn't mean that there's not people or there can be a lot of people around. But the loneliness and the isolation is authenticity helps to open those doors. Yes, absolutely. There was a book that was written a number of years ago, became a major bestseller called The Friendship Factor. Yep. And I'll never forget one of the, I think he had like six points about what makes a good friend and that sort of thing. Anyway, one of them was living authentically or being Mm -hmm. authentic. I think it was actually being transparent. Yep. Because if you and I are sitting down and we're developing a relationship. Now, we've known each other for a long time, but if, if we're forming a friendship from the beginning, yep. one of the things we do is we test, can I share something about myself <laughs> with this person that I'm not going to be judged about? Yep. Like your wife has tattoos and carries guns. <laughs> well, it's easy for me to be authentic about that because that's her. <laughs> there you go. Very good. No, but, you know, for us to share stuff about ourselves, yeah. that's a test. Mm. You know, and, and people who can't do that will never get below a certain level of friendship. Yep. You know, their relationships will always stay on the surface. And so for me, that piece of authenticity, one of the, so at a personal level, a, a self-oriented level, yeah. living authentically allows me to enter into deeper relationships with others. Secondly, I would say is it's it allows me to have much greater impact. Yes. So if today, especially in today's world, mm-hmm. people don't separate the message from the messenger. Very good. And so if people, you know, if, if I'm living in, if I'm not being authentic, if I'm not being transparent, people aren't going to trust me. Yep. You know, it's funny in today's world, they'd rather know the good, the bad and the ugly and choose to forgive you mm. and, and, acknowledge, and then listen to what you have to say. But if you're not being authentic, if, if it's clear, you're just, you're, you're keeping everything real close to the chest. You're not letting people in. Yep. People aren't going to trust what you have to say. So I think from an inner perspective, Living transparently, being authentic allows me to have deeper levels of relationships. And then outwardly, mm-hmm. it actually helps to build relationships that allows, in our case, for a more openness, which I'm always about wanting to share Jesus. Yes. And it actually allows people to be more willing to listen yeah. when I'm living authentically and sharing authentically. Yeah, it brings a, it, it does bring a greater impact. You know, 
uh, some of this is generational. Oh, absolutely. And, and we've kind of highlighted that. But, you know, it's easy to pick out the Pentecostal preacher that, you know, says the hallelujah or bless <laughs> God in the certain ways. It's a little bit easier to look at that and go, well, that doesn't seem real authentic. Mm. Um, but it, I don't think that it's just limited if because we have younger viewers mm-hmm. as well. It's not only limited to older pastors from a particular denomination. No. Like uh, one of the passages I love in the Bible is when Jesus, I think it's in John 1, uh, and he comes to Nathaniel and uh, his friends bring him there. And he says, he says, and here is a man in whom knows, uh, there is no guile. Yeah. And so, listen, you can be a hit preacher on the stage and tell cool stories, but authenticity doesn't necessarily mean just that you have an authentic voice when you talk. It's the lack of agendas. It's not having yep. an agenda. Very good. It's not trying to control people. There's, you know, some of that authenticity, you know, can be more than just a stylistic way, but it, it really can go to the, like the uh, really issues of the heart of having agendas in life and wanting to be something. I, hey, I want to be a big preacher on the big stage. Some of that can also give give way to lacking authenticity. Oh, a hundred percent. I actually think that you know, in a in a world where people are looking for authenticity, authentic being authentic, and I'm using that inside yep. of quotes, yep. is actually just a style. Yep, it's nothing. It does not reflect the heart. Yes, you know, there could be people who are authentic on stage, mm-hmm. who are not authentic at all in real life. You know, and so, yeah, we're, we want to make sure that we're talking about real life here. Yeah. Here again, substance, not style. Yeah. You know? you know, just as we're talking, I'm, this is one of the things I'm thinking about is the nature of God is authentic. If you yeah. think, you know, here's God in heaven. He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. So he never he never treats us different. He always has love. He always mm-hmm. has truth. He always has grace. He always has kindness. But at the same time, he also has righteousness and holiness. But none of those qualities ever change. And yeah. so as believers, when we can model that and go, hey, listen, you know, I, I live always with the love for people, always with truth, always with grace. But there's a, there is a just an honesty of personality and life that comes out. It really reflects the character and the nature of God. It does. Absolutely. Um, So we're probably getting close to wrapping this Mm. subject up. Um, You know, my last thought on this would be, you know, not living authentically really can be tiring. Yes. You know, they, they always say that, you know, kind of like, the problem with a liar is you have to have a really good memory. <laughs> Whereas yeah. if you tell the truth, you don't have to. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're choosing to hide, you're choosing to wear a mask. You have to be so conscious all the time to have that mask on. Yeah. And it's tiring. Yeah. And I'm just reminded that you know of Jesus. It's on the it says on the last day of the festival, he cried out with a loud voice. If anyone is thirsty. Yeah. Let him come unto me, you know, and I'll give him not only will I give him waters, but living waters will flow out of him. And so, you know, Jesus is living authentically. He's calling us to authenticity. Mm. He's calling us to a life of, as he put it elsewhere, he said, where his burden is easy. You know, yep. we don't have to carry this heavy stuff. And, he, and so if we'll just... You know, like, I think the closer we get to God, it's Scripture says if we'll seek him with all of our heart, we'll find him. Yep. And it's not that he's playing hide and seek. Yep. He's there all the time. It's our orientation of looking for him, you know, opening up ourselves, confessing, as we said earlier, agreeing yep. in who I am, and then allowing that sort of openness to carry over into our relationship with others seems like if we if we are it seems like for as a from a christian perspective that openness and honesty with others starts with openness and honesty with god yes doesn't end there we may have to even do some hard work we may have to acknowledge some things you know about our personalities and our histories and all of that Mm -hmm. 
But if we start there, maybe we'll get to the right place. No, Mark, that is so good. And you know what? Everybody needs to hear this. I don't think that any of us are exempt. And it's one one reason I, lo- I love World Challenge. Mm-hmm. I love Gary Wilkerson. He's so authentic. I love doing ministry with you. Yeah. I never have to worry where Mark Renfro is coming from. He, <laughs> what you see is what you get. Yeah. He speaks clear. He speaks straight. And, it, and it's good to be in relationship with people like that. That it, 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 There's just an authenticity that mm-hmm. comes through in life. And so I think that this is something that maybe people are watching today and you know, we should pray. Yes, God's grace covers us and he forgives us, but it, it also gives us this great uh, feeling of authority and righteousness that we go, hey, because he's covered me and because he lives in me, now I don't have to try to be something else. If I can just be who I am in Christ and I'm always growing, always transforming, there's something that's so powerful and wonderful that I think that this world, a lot of people in this world are, are searching for true authenticity. Mm. So, Mark, there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with maybe being authentic or having an impact in their life that's off, that, mm. that, that, that carries authenticity. Would you pray today for people that have joined with us to ask God to help us to be, you know, live in a, maybe a more authentic way mm-hmm. that has a great impact? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Yeah. Father, thank you so much for um, your healing power that uh, helps us forget things and wounds in the past that maybe have caused us to hide behind a mask. Lord, I think that you would just like to set us free from all of that. And so, Lord, we ask that you do that. Lord, help us to live authentic lives. And then help us to live lives that are authentic to the world so that we can have a greater impact. Lord, you said nobody hides a lamp under the bed, but rather they put it out on full display. So, Lord, we're asking that you would help us to live authentically so that people would know you better and that we could grow in deeper relationships with others also. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Always good being with you, John. Amen. Be sure to join us next week when we are going to talk about the subject of evangelism in the real world. I think you'll really benefit from it. Likewise, go to your favorite podcasting app, YouTube, however you listen to us or watch us. Like, share, leave a comment. All of these things allow the content to go to more people. Thank you once again for your time. We love you. Be sure to join us next week. Thanks so much for joining us. We know your time is valuable and we're so thankful you chose to spend it with us. As a follow-up to our conversation, we'd like to recommend Gary Wilkerson's sermon series through the Psalms called A Heart After God. You can find it at worldchallenge.org or you can get more information in the show notes. Join us next time for a conversation on evangelism in the real world. We'll see you then.